Ken Whiting with Paddle TV with another in-depth, unbiased gear review. And in this video, we're testing out the Pelican Catch Mode 110 fishing kayak. Now, fishing kayaks have been one of, if not the most popular type of kayak for a few years now. And with that, there's been a lot of development, a lot of new types of fishing kayaks have come around. In particular, a lot of high-end fishing kayaks that have high-end fishing features for core anglers. Now, these high-end fishing kayaks, they come with a real price tag. I mean, you can expect to pay 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, even more than $5,000 for a high-end fishing kayak. Now, for many of you, who aren't really into, into kayak fishing or fishing, you might think that's crazy. <laughs> and it does sound a little crazy, but if you are a core angler, then you might be used to spending tens of thousands of dollars on a power boat. So a couple thousand bucks for a fishing kayak with all the features that a high end fishing kayak has, well, that sounds very reasonable, but it's not for everyone. In fact, there's a huge number of people that they just enjoy the a fishing occasionally. They don't need a really high-end fishing kayak. They want a kayak that they can go and comfortably fish out of here now and again, but also they can go for a paddle with when they don't want to go fishing. And for those people, there are alternatives. There's a, a variety of kayaks or fishing kayaks under a thousand dollars to choose from. And that's what the Pelican Catch Mode 110 is geared towards. And so we're gonna get this thing on the water right away to test it, but first, let's tell you a bit more about what this thing has to offer. The Pelican Catch Mode 110 fishing kayak has a retail price of 740 US dollars. It's 10 feet, eight inches long. It's 34 and a half inches wide. It weighs 63 pounds or 28 and a half kilos. And it has a capacity of 375 pounds or 170 kilos. The catch mode features four carry handles, two on each end and one on each side. It has a retractable skeg, a suspension seat that transforms to a booster seat. It has covered front storage with a paddle holder, gear tracks for mounting accessories, two bottle holders, traction pads, three flush mount rod holders, and bungees in the rear tank well for securing a crate or dry bags. Now, one of the things I'm gonna really enjoy about testing this boat is actually getting it to the water because I'm used to fishing kayaks that weigh a ton. This one doesn't. 63 pounds is really good for a fishing kayak. That's one of a couple things that Pelican is really well known for. They produce, they're known for producing affordable kayaks and also lightweight kayaks. And that's because they make their kayaks with thermoform technology. Uh, unlike rotomolded kayaks, which most kayaks are rotomolded, you have plastic put into a, a mold and heat it up and spun and boom, you pull off the mold and there you have your kayak. The way they make this kayak is they have two sheets of basically plastic. They mold each separately and they put like a clamshell, they put them together, weld those two pieces together and boom, the result is a durable and lighter weight kayak. So I'm gonna enjoy getting this thing to the water and giving it a test. Here we go. All right, I've had a, two hours to paddle this thing around and test it out. Unfortunately, I wasn't fishing. That would have been a smart thing. But what I really wanted to test was how this thing 
performed um, and how it felt as a boat because you know the fishing side is very it's easy to extrapolate how it's going to do as a as a, a fishing platform from that and so let's start like i always do with portability first of all now this kayak is you know it's a 11 foot 10 uh, foot 8 inch boat and so it's in that very easy to move around for a hard shell kayak range anything out of 12 feet is a lot easier than boats over 12 feet uh, combined with the fact that something I mentioned before is 63 pounds for a fishing kayak is very good for a sit on top fishing kayak I expect fishing kayaks to be heavier than that so 63 pounds very portable very manageable size good marks for portability something else that's worth mentioning is I like these side gear carrying handles I could carry this kayak suitcase style and the, what I like about them is that they're big there's lots of room and so when you do grab them your fingers don't get pinched which is a common problem with side carrying handles they're just not comfortable so yes good portability not compared to a portable kayak but good portability so now let's talk about uh, stability is it a stable kayak absolutely it's uh, it's a very stable kayak it's stable just sitting here in the sitting position but it's also very stable in a standing position or in the you know the the elevated sitting position when I drop the seat down which is a really nice feature now if you're new to kayak fishing uh, the reason this is this stability and this ability to sit up higher or even stand is important is because the perspective you get when you're up high you can see so much better uh, the underworld you can see cover and structure so much better from an elevated position makes a big difference even that the, the elevated sitting position huge difference from this normal position yes your center of gravity is higher it's not as stable but still a very stable kayak next performance it can't be expected to be a speed machine being a 10 11 foot boat uh, there is no such thing as a 10 to 11 foot boat that is a speed machine this thing though is a fairly slow kayak it's designed more for stability as a fishing platform than for covering major distances so if you're looking for a boat that you can cover big distances on a fishing trip or just a paddling trip you know that you'll be working hard to do that in this boat it's not that you can't do it it's just you're going to work hard so not high performing what I do like is for a shorter boat having that drop skeg the retractable skeg is a nice feature it definitely makes this boat track better which means go in a straight line a lot better than without it it's still very maneuverable easy to turn around whether the skeg's down or up something to note about the skeg though um, is that you can flip it down from the here from your kayak but I can't put it back up so once it's down I have to get to shore get out of the kayak in order to get that thing back up now that's something with higher price point kayaks you have you can control a skeg drop skeg from with a rope on the side of your boat anyway little side side note there now something else that relates to performance that I want to talk about is the paddle that I'm using now I've been testing out the wilderness systems pungo glass paddle this is a 315 US dollar paddle not a cheap paddle but it's a very nice paddle it is a 220 centimeter paddle that converts to a 240 up to a 240 centimeter paddle uh, it can have infinite twists on it too now the shaft is 50 percent carbon 50 percent fiberglass the blades are fiberglass so it's nice and light it's about 30 ounces uh, when, when all said and done but we're really uh, I know I was testing the paddle which it's a nice paddle $315 is a lot of money for any paddle but you get what you pay for with paddles and uh, small touring style blades you're not going to get a ton of power out of this thing but overall just a nice paddle and I love the adjustable ferrule where you can adjust that's particularly important and that's what I wanted to really talk about right now it's particularly important for this type of kayak where you have this low sitting position and a higher sitting position when you flip this thing into the higher sitting position 
and you're sitting that much higher and it's considerably higher that you're sitting, you really, it's a big advantage to have a longer paddle when you're sitting that high so you can reach the water. You're not having to reach down to the water with each stroke that you take. And so in that kind of scenario, having an adjustable paddle makes a lot of sense. Now I was, when I'm just paddling like this, with this in the sitting position, I was using uh, the paddle at around 232, 234 um, centimeters. That was my, what I came to as my happy zone in this, in this kayak. But when I got up on the pedestal, I immediately moved it to 240 and I kind of wanted a little bit more out of it, in fact. And I know uh, that the Wilderness System paddles, they have some adjustable ferrules uh, paddles that start at 240 and go to 260. That might be a better choice for uh, a kayak like this if you think you're going to be paddling around in the pedestal position. That being said, the pedestal position really is more of a fishing platform than a paddling platform. So, you know, you sit up high, it's easier to cast, easier to see things around you. And when if you you know, if it, when it comes time to moving and you have to move any considerable way, you probably want to drop down to the sitting position and paddle that way. And so you don't need the adjustable uh, paddle, but it's a nice feature. It's a nice option. All right, so now comfort. Look at me. I'm sitting cross-legged in a kayak. I can sit in a low position. I can sit in a high position. I can stand. I mean, it's a comfortable kayak. Suspension seats, I've said it once, I'll say it a thousand times, they are the ticket for me. They fit and form to almost any butt shape. It's a nice wide seat and so it'll fit most butts very well. If I was going to be picky about the seat, I'd say, you know, the support is pretty high. It's wouldn't mind if, if there's more lumbar support, low back support, but I'm being picky. <laughs> I'm being picky there. It's a it's a very comfortable platform. Now Something that's worth talking about with comfort is sizing and comfort. Now I'm six foot two um, and about 34 inch inseam, something like that. I'm pretty long leg, legged and the foot pegs are all the way forward. There's a ton of room here. I mean, to use these first foot peg notches, you'd have to be real small, <laughs> but uh, you know, I'm maxing this thing out at six foot two. So anyone taller than this is not gonna be comfortable because their knees are gonna be up too high and it gets in the way of paddling. Now, something else I do have to mention regarding this seat, even though I really like it, one thing that I don't like about it is that it doesn't sit great in this kayak. It has play. It can slide back and forth. This isn't the first suspension or frame seat that I've had this problem with. And a variety of different types or, or uh, uh, makes of kayaks. It's not specific to this kayak. It happens a lot. And I wish it didn't because it's an annoyance when you're paddling and, you're, and your seat shifts a little bit back and forth. There's an easy fix. You can just stuff something in there to stop it with a piece of foam or whatever you can find on hand. Uh, but you shouldn't have to do that. And it is a little bit of a, an issue when if you're, you know, you're leaning out landing a fish and then all of a sudden you slide over, chances of it actually sending you into the water are, is very, very low. You'd have to be really committing to that fish. But, you know, it's an annoyance I had to mention. So now features, and there's some features to talk about in this kayak. So let's start with the bow storage area and the cover that comes with it. I really like this thing. This bow area has always been this limbo zone for me. Like, what do you do with it? What I like about this is it's wide open. You can take that net right off and not use it. And then you have this big open area there. Great if you had like a small to medium sized dog that you like to take on your paddling trips. But for me, I'm very much a out of sight, out of mind kind of person. And so when things go into hatches, uh, especially when I'm fishing, it's usually, that's where it stays for the day because I just kind of forget that I even have it. It just, I don't even know why I bring the stuff in the hatch a lot of the time. Right now, I can see what's there. And so it's not out of mind. I like that. The other features I talked about, the, the seat, which I'm a big fan of, and it's being able to adjust it to that pedestal style seat. Something else that's worth noting is the water bottle holder. I like this thing. I haven't noticed I've had a water bottle 
this whole time, which is, well, it's not great because I should be drinking more, but it's locked in place. There's no water bottle flinging around in the boat. And that, in a big wide open platform boat, that's often the biggest, the biggest complaint I have is that the water bottles are bouncing around. Even if I put the water bottle up there, it's gonna be rolling around, making noise, scaring fish, uh, and just being an annoyance. Um, so having two, nice feature. Now, gear tracks on the boat. I'm a big fan of gear tracks for a fishing kayak these track system where you can mount accessories. So anything uses a T-bolt system, slide it in, you lock it down and boom. You could put a fish finder, you could put a cell phone holder, your GPS, you could put rod holders. I mean, there's lots of uses for gear tracks, except there's not a lot of use for these gear tracks because they're in a terrible position. <laughs> this is a paddle kayak. I have to paddle to move this kayak. My paddle stroke, there's no choice. It's coming right alongside the boat here. If I put anything right there, my paddle's just gonna, I can't paddle. I have to paddle like this. So it makes no sense to have a gear track right there. I mean, someone just threw that on as a, as a hey, this needs gear tracks. It should be up there. It should be, more importantly, behind here, some, somewhere else. <laughs> other than where your paddle needs to go. This isn't a problem doing something like this if you're in a pedal kayak, because you don't have a paddle. You typically don't have a paddle, but uh, in a paddle kayak, you just don't want anything here. Same thing with the rod holder. There's a third rod holder. These two rod holders back here, great. The rods are gonna go back out of my way. That's wonderful. Having a rod holder right here, the only thing I can think of, and this isn't actually a bad, a bad one, uh, is when I'm standing and fishing, uh, I can just place the rod in there and then sit down or tie my line or whatever. And, and now that I think about it, that's exactly what this rod holder is for. Once I'm standing and fishing, it's a place to put the rod. Actually, good idea putting the rod holder there. <laughs> I take that one back. Now I already talked about the retractable skeg. A nice addition, it does the job helps this boat track, go straight. Problem, only small problem being, you can deploy it from the kayak, but you're gonna have to get out of the kayak to bring it back up. So that brings us to overall value. Well, straight up 740 US dollars for this type of a fishing kayak, it's really good value. You're not going to do much better, if better at all, for a fishing kayak with this many features. It's just, 740 bucks is a very, very fair price. Now, there's a few other kayaks in that sub thousand dollar fishing kayaks in that sub thousand dollar range, which are quality fishing kayaks, but there's not that, that many. Um, one that pops to mind that I tested last year was the Perception Pescador, and that was a nice boat too. Um, one of the big differences between that one and this one that I really like about this one is the seat. I'm a sucker for comfort. This one's got a nice suspension seat, whereas the Pescador, you were sitting, boom, on the plastic itself. And I was uncomfortable after a couple of hours of paddling. Not the case with this one. You know, I can't really say much more than that. Great value for the buck. So who is it for? Who should consider this? Because just because it's good value doesn't mean it's the right boat for you. So who is this one for? Well, this is a very versatile fishing kayak. Like this is a fishing kayak that a hardcore angler could totally appreciate, get, maybe customize a little bit with some more gear tracks, sort out. And it does, almost doesn't matter what type of fishing kayak you're gonna get. Uh, if you're a hardcore angler, you're going to customize your fishing kayak. So this is totally uh, a, a reasonable fishing kayak for an experienced angler, but it's also a great first timers fishing kayak. Someone who wants to have a, wants to get into it and just wants to see if it's something they like, or someone who is a casual angler. They just like the opportunity to be able to go and do some fishing in the kayak, but they also want a kayak that other people can enjoy or they can enjoy just paddling. So it's a very versatile kayak. The only thing it's not for is covering real distance. It's not a fast kayak. It's a slow, relatively speaking, a slow kayak. And so if you like a boat with performance, not just stability and fishability, then it's uh, probably not the best choice for you. That's about it. 
I hope you have enjoyed this gear review. If you have, you know what to do. Give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already, and stay tuned because we've got lots more paddling tips, paddling uh, gear reviews, and paddling adventures coming your way.